Hi everyone, Sandra Duran Wilson here, and welcome to this week's Mixed Media Soul Sparks. Every week we're going to explore different techniques for mixed media, such as how you might work with your surfaces, color, design, composition, and whatever else we decide to throw into the mix. So what I want to begin with today is a gesso transfer. This is one of the first things that got me started on my very first book, probably a dozen years ago. And we've already done in the past, we did a transfer, which is transparent. But with this one, we're gonna be working with gesso. So when you look at something that's printed on paper, such as this piece, what you're seeing is the color that is on white paper, like here. So when you take the white paper off, everything that is white will go transparent. So if you're putting this on a colored surface, it'll lose that white. So I want to start with the basic, with uh, the gesso, which will be white. And first, a, a few tips about how we can get these images. Now, this particular image is from a calendar. And if you don't have a printer or you don't have access to a printer, laser printer that is, you can use something like the calendar pages or book pages or magazine pages rather. However, some calendars are too heavy. The paper is too heavy to rub off. So for mine, I have a laser printer and I made a laser copy of this. And I've already cut out parts of it, but you can see how you know, I had printed this on just regular copy paper. You don't want to use special paper, just regular copy paper. But there's a fun thing to do, like if you're going to go to the office supply store, the copy store, you can take your page like this, and you can change the scale of it. Let me just show you this one. This was a page out of a magazine. And as you can see, it was an oversized magazine, a nice pattern. But I took it and I reduced the size of it so I can change the scale. And even this could be kind of interesting if you're using the same pattern but different scales for transfer. Here's another one, the original magazine page. Now this you could actually use straight. You didn't, wouldn't have to copy it. However, I again did some things where I enlarged it. So you can see that the stripes are a bigger size. I can come in, change the values, the colors, all of this on uh, copy machines. So it's kind of fun to go and try these different things. And then you just have a white piece of paper so when you're rubbing off the paper, you don't get quite so messy. And that'll make sense in a moment. So these need to be laser prints, meaning that when they get water on them, they're not going to smear. So if you think you have a laser printer, you probably don't. If you have a laser printer, you know, because the, the toners are very expensive. So. Some new printers, you can try to test it by putting a little water on it and then rubbing it. And if it, the ink smears, it won't work for this. So either use the magazine page itself or use the laser print. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do this. And let me set these aside. Now here is the one, I already cut it out to size. I have a piece of mat board, and I have put gesso on here with a texture. Might be a little difficult to see white on white, but there is a, a, a very, um, very textured surface. I did that with gesso, but you could do it with paste or with gel just to create the texture. Now it's dry. And when I put this on, I'm going to need to really press it down so that the image goes into those textures. So let me just get my other glove on here, and I'll show you how to do this. 
Now my gesso, I'm using a Liquitex gesso and I get it in a big container and so this past year since I haven't been teaching and traveling as much, it's gotten rather thick. So I took my gesso and I diluted it a little. It's still pretty thick though, you can see. But before I diluted it, I just took my knife and I smeared it onto this mat board and that's how I was able to get that nice texture. But right now, I want to do a thin surface and then get the transfer on. So I'm gonna just take my brush, put a little water on it. This is all pretty time sensitive, so you need to have everything ready to go before you start this. So you wanna have a dry surface and then you're going to quickly apply gesso using your brush. I've already trimmed down my laser print meaning I've cut off the white edges from the print paper. Okay, and here's the thing. If I want this to be as smooth as possible, I could mist it with some water, but because this is already textured, I'm not gonna worry about this. I'm just gonna put this face down into the wet gesso making sure that I've got it kind of centered. I'm just on my fingers, so I'm getting it everywhere. Now, while this is still wet, I wanna make sure that I get it rubbed down. The transfer is only going to happen where the gesso is wet and where it's making contact with the paper. So if I have air bubbles underneath there, it's not going to adhere. I'm kind of pushing the gesso out and now I'm just going to use my hand or possibly even a cloth because there's texture. Now if this was smooth, and I will show you a smooth application, it's going to be a little different. The cloth is going to be able to go down into the kind of valleys. Now, one important piece is you do not want to get the gesso on this side. If you do get gesso there, or if you don't have enough, like see, I don't know if there's quite enough there. I'm going to add a little more and press that down. If you do get some gesso on this just wipe it off immediately. Don't spread it around because what will happen is it makes it difficult to get the paper off. So now, another very important piece is you need to let this dry. For the best success, let it dry overnight. Every time somebody tries this, I always hear from them and go, oh, I've tried this so many times and it never works. And I said, well, how long are you letting it dry? And they're like, oh, an hour. And it's like, that's not long enough. So, you know, it might be four or five hours you might be able to get away with it. But to be safe, just let it dry overnight. And you're going to come back, and I'm going to show you what to do, how to get the paper off. But before we do that, I'm going to give you a little tip. Now, this is just regular... <clears throat> canvas. It's not gessoed or anything. It's, I bought a roll of it. Or heavy muslin. And I keep a piece like this around where I just kind of clean my brush off so I'm not wasting the gesso. And I start to get a similar surface like what I just had there. Now here's a piece. Has nothing on it. And I'm going to show you how to get this. Okay, so again I'm going to take the gesso. Now first, let me just show you this. Remember I said you need to have everything ready to go. Here is a print and it's got this white edge. And I want to trim that down because I don't want that white edge there. 
Now with the gesso, it's not so important because I am going to have a white edge like this. But personally, I just want to cut it off. You can use scissors. You can tear by hand. You could even use some of the scissors that cut a deckled edge. All of those are possibilities. All right. So now, I'm going to just mist this with a small amount of water. Rub it in. Get my gesso on. And I'm really wanting to rub this down into the, into the fabric. So it's like I might even have to do a couple of layers because this first layer, it's really soaking in. You can even see it going through the fabric a bit. So now I'm going to put a little more on. And remember what I said, it's only going to stick where there's the wet gesso and where this makes contact. So I'm going to mix this with a small amount of water. And that's going to keep it from kind of wrinkling up. Now this is a little trickier because I have this wet gesso out on the edges. As opposed to this one, it just went all the way to the edge. So I've got this key card and I'm going to be careful about how I'm pressing this down because you see how that gesso came up on the edge there. I don't want that to get pulled back onto the surface. I'll just keep a paper towel there and kind of wipe it off, keep it clean. Now I'm going to go to that edge and I'm just going to pull it off and do this because I don't really want that edge right there. Now let's just clean my, my brush off and this will be a nice piece that I can paint onto. I can do lots of different things. All right, so those are going to dry overnight. So I happen to have the dried ones and I'm going to show you how to get the paper off. So I have just a small piece of sandpaper and all I'm going to do is just kind of scratch and scuff up the back. And I'm going to kind of do these simultaneously so you can see the differences between texture and smooth. And now I'm going to mist this with some water. And do you see what happens when the paper gets wet? It kind of lets you see what's hidden behind there. And I let that water sit for just a moment. And then I'm going to start to rub. And do you see how the paint, the paint, how the paper is starting to kind of roll up? And you think, oh, well, that's pretty easy. I'm getting this off really fast. Well, don't be too excited because it takes about three times to do this. You saw when I first sprayed the water on it, made the paper go transparent. So it looks like I'm getting off all the paper, but when this dries, it'll be hazy white again. And this first layer comes off easiest and then the next layers they're small they're thin layers and I'll, I'll show you some tricks to get the paper off so I'm just going to leave that one right there and then come over here to this one Get a paper towel here. And you'll just keep doing this until you get all of that paper off. And it's going to dry. Now see what just happened there? 
because I intentionally left a couple of air bubbles in here because I wanted to show you what could happen if it didn't quite adhere. You get this spot where the image didn't go. So that, those are the possibilities. So just think about what kind of images you want to use for this. If you run the possibility of you're using somebody's face, you might lose a nose or an ear or an eye if you don't get your transfer on just right. Okay. So I want to show you what I mean by what happens when this starts to dry. You see that little bit of haze? So as this dries more, then this whole thing is going to be, become a little hazy like that. And let me show you the next step of how to get all of that off. Let's get this out of the way. This is just brown paper, like from a paper bag. And what happens on here, now you see how much more I'm getting off right now? Just with my, my hand with the gloves on, I didn't add any more water. What will happen if you add more water to this, your hand's going to keep rubbing over the surface, and it's going to be wet, and you're going to think you have the paper off, but you're not going to have the paper off because it's wet and it's going to look like it. So here I'm able to get that next layer of paper off and you see it's much, much finer. You know, the little, whatever you would call it, little paper rubbings, I guess. So let's say you get to this point and you still have a little bit of peach fuzz, I call it. You could just missed a tiny amount of water on there. And then you take this brown paper, and what that does is it actually absorbs any extra water, and it really helps you get that last little bit of paper off. So that's how you would do this. If you find that your image is rubbing off, then really stop, maybe let it dry longer, maybe you haven't let it dry long enough, and be gentle with it. See if you can kind of coax that paper off. Now on the texture one, like over here, you might just have to uh, work with those hills and valleys a little more. But you're going to end up with, let me just show you this part. Remember where the paper on the image, it was white up here? So this is going to stay white. So your image is going to look just like it did on the print that you used because you're, having, you're transferring it to white. So what, why would you do that rather than having color underneath? Because if you have something like this image with the clouds, you want those clouds to show up. And you can see here where I've taken paint and I've started to integrate the... Um, background or the background, the, the gesso surface, into this image. And here I just used um, a little bit of, this is a burnt umber. And you could come back in with some blues up in here, a little burnt umber down into here. And you see how you can start to reimagine this piece. And I have some different ideas for what I might do with this. And, you know, I could actually collage this into another painting. It could become a book page in a, in a handmade book. So many other ideas. So I will give you the notes on this and give you a lot more ideas of what to do with these. These are the gesso transfers. And I'll show you this one when it's finished. And thanks for joining me this week. I'll see you next week.
join the Creative Awakening community on Facebook, where you'll be able to post your art, connect with other creatives around the world, and ask questions. Use the hashtag Mixed Media Soul Sparks when posting your work on social media. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week.